house folks had a car broke down couldn't get here and uh, also some of our bus bus people the devil will attack them try to not get them come this week appreciate all y'all being here a uh, young man over there brother wayne and that a blessing to have him last few couple of sundays and then this young lady right here is it danielle daniel raise your hand right there she got saved on easter sunday morning and uh been here ever since isn't that something bless your heart we're so glad to have you and it's a shame you're going to sit by yourself. If, these, if any of these ladies don't speak to you, tell me. You point out to me which ones they are. I'll call them out up here. That's what, really? Really, y'all be nice. To people. Amen. All right. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah. That's what I used to call it when I got saved. Nehemiah chapter 4. Uh, we'll look here. Verse scripture here. Not uh, Nehemiah and these people here were building these walls. And uh, uh, we call Habakkuk, you know, uh, Malachi. Looks like Malachi. Still looks like Malachi. We call uh, Job Job. It's really what it says, Job, J-O-B, Job. But um, anyway, I learned how the preachers say it, so I started saying it like that. All right. All right. Nehemiah chapter number four tonight. And um, they're building this wall here. They got a job to do. And I'm, I'm going to be very, very brief tonight and just point out to you three little quick things on this story. Uh, verse number one, but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, this would be somebody in Morganton. Uh, they had a little bit of opposition. Uh, he was wroth and took down their signs and tried to pass an ordinance against them using the fair ground. And malt, shining light. That's all in verse 1 in Hebrew. Verse 2. And he spake before the city council. And the people in the community and said, What do these feeble weirdos from that church over there? What are they trying to do? And well, they, who do they think they are? We had, a, we had a youth rally over there one time at the old building. We had a, we had a tent. I had it in a tent. I mean, most of y'all probably don't remember that. We didn't have nowhere else to have it. And the tent would hold, I think, five or six hundred. And we just set it up and started to run and have church. And about a day before it, somebody called and said, uh, they're not going to let y'all have this thing. I said, why? They said, because you got wires laying across the parking lot, uh, electrical, and that's against city ordinance. And it mostly is sound, like stuff like that right there. You ain't going to get electrocuted with that. You can bite that and it won't, and you ain't going to get electrocuted. And, the, and I said, well, that's ridiculous. Well, anyway, went down there and we finally persuaded them. We'd let them out and we just went ahead and had it. And like the next week, they have these big, whatever they call it over here, Morgan and every, every weekend on Friday night, these big wicked dances and rock music stuff. And it was pouring the rain, and there was wires laying all across in that grass. That's right. So my, a lot of them don't even realize it, but the spirit that's in them, just, ugh, when they see one of them signs, they don't even realize it. They might be good, fine people. And I'm sure they're all saved. <laughs> I say they are. But that these these people, it just aggravated the fire out of them that these Jews were were gonna build this wall. And I ain't got time to get into this tonight, but did you know anti Semitism, hatred for Jews, is it's like uh it's like a spirit that gets in people. People hate Jews and don't even know why they hate them. They really don't. And and I'm not saying that the Jews over there now are God's children. I'm not saying they're saved. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not even saying they're all God's earthly children because they're so mixed up now in their, in their ethnicity that half of them ain't even really Jews. Some of them are Jews say they're Jews and they're not. But there, there, there seems to be a natural uh, instinctive hatred for Jews. And it's from Hitler way back in the Old Testament and even here. And the same is true with Christians. People don't like Christians that don't even know what a Christian is. People don't like Christians that don't even know any Christians. Those people on TV, they just automatically like like those people on. I don't. If you if you can watch the View more than five minutes, I don't understand your brain. I can't stand it. I've never watched it in my life. The only time I've ever seen it is when they play clips of it on the news, and that's enough right there to make me want to scream. Uh, and they they instinctively against what what's right. And a lot of times they don't even know it. Bible talks like the spirit that's in them, that in the children of disobedience. They don't even realize it. It's just like me and you when we, we walk into a bar or something or if we had to go into 
a club and give out tracks. There's automatically, I don't like this. This ain't my scene, man. I don't, I don't like this atmosphere. They feel the opposite way. So anyway, they, they stood against it. And um, let's skip on down there to look at verse number four. He said, hear, O our God, for we are despised. And that's good. Thank God. I feel sorry for a preacher that this world loves. Y'all saw that picture everybody's passing around. I don't even know if it's real. You don't know if it's AI generated. I don't know how many people sent it to me of a certain great, wonderful, celebrated preacher in America and his wife at the at the uh, thing where they uh, LGBT thing. Y'all see that? It's passed all over the internet. People, I don't know how many people sent it to me. I won't say the name because I don't know if it's true. But uh, him and his wife at the red carpet of the uh, LGBT celebrate lifestyle. Listen, people, that ain't a preacher. That ain't a preacher. Uh, a preacher ain't going to go to no LGBT thing and walk on the red carpet and have pictures took with his wife. My goodness, y'all. I mean, uh, we are despised. Jesus was despised and rejected of men. And notice what he said there. We are despised. Turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity. Let not their sin be blotted out. Good night, boy. That's some prayer, ain't it? I, I got down and said, Lord, don't forgive them people. <laughs> what a prayer. That boy got down in business, didn't he? Don't blot their sin out, Lord. Um, and, and give them a prey. Cover not their iniquity, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builder. Now, look at verse 6. So built we the wall. Amen. That's our job this week, church. So built we the wall. And the wall, the wall was joined together under the half thereof. Had to get it done? For the people had a mind to work. Four-letter cuss word this day, just this iteration. I, I had to go in the dollar store. Poor old girl in there working, putting up stock. You have to ring a bell. Then she runs up here and waits on me. Then she has to go back there. I said, where's everybody at? She said, we can't get nobody to work. I, uh, one lady told me yesterday. She said, I have to work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday. I'm having to do the work of three people. And I said, well, tell them if you're going to do three people's work, you ought to get three people's pay. Because you can't get nobody to work. Amen? Really? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But these people here, they had a mind to work. They had a mind to work. I like the way they put the word mind in there. Their mind was set. You know, we hear a lot of talk about these days about your mindset. In sports, you know, uh, you get the team together, they said, all right, look, team, all right, y'all, we got to get in the right mindset. Well, now, what does that mean? That means we, we, we get our head in the game. We ain't thinking about our boyfriend up there in the stands or mom and daddy over here waving at them or what we're going to do. That's why our mind is in that game. The coach says, get your head in the game. But what's that, what he mean? Get your head in the game, boy. And what he means is uh, uh, forget everything else and have a mindset. A mindset is, is like um, uh, you, you do anything. You, you, you do a job. If you're, if you're going to paint your house, if you're going to, even mow the grass or anything. You got to get this mindset. I'm going to get this housework done today. I'm going to get that done. You have to get into a certain mindset. Now, we are in officially youth rally mindset. And our job, he said, the people had a mind to work. You know, I've noticed over the years, I've been doing this a long time now. And I noticed especially about young men and also young ladies. If a boy will work hard and regular, you won't have a whole lot of trouble out of it. Anybody that'll, or an adult for that matter, if somebody will work a job every day and work hard, they very, very seldom do they get into too much trouble. You what know, gets people in trouble is laying around, laying with nothing to do. That's the, the idle mind is what? That's right, brother. That's what the devil. You know, the people of Sodom in the Bible said in the book of Sodom, you know what caused Sodom to get so messed up? Over there, uh, it says, it said they had pride. And it said it had the abundance of idleness and fullness of bread. That's what it said. Now listen, think about that. Them three things. So if you sit on the couch and you don't have a job, you don't do nothing, and all you have is a TV and a computer, and you have idleness, and you have steak and tacos and Doritos and Pepsi and ice cream and everything, fullness of bread, and you have a lot of pride like I'm this and I'm that, it'll turn you into homosexual. <laughs> that's what happened to them 
That's a weird doctrine, ain't it? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you, uh, listen, don't, don't lay around with nothing to do. You know, the devil will put all kind of wicked stuff in your head. He'll put all kind of perverted stuff in your mind. Stay busy. Stay busy. I'll tell you what people used to do, and some of you people don't think it's crazy, but old people here will understand what I'm saying. You know what old guys used to do? I've, I've never done it. Uh, you can ask Carrie. She's sitting right there. I never did it, but uh, if if you didn't have something to do, they'd think up you something to do. Uh, that's re- really. I've, I've been hearing them old men. Uh, they'd tell something, move that pile of rocks over here on this side of the driveway. I say, okay, Daddy. Whew, I'm done. Now move it back. How many of y'all ever heard of old timers doing something? Now, today we think, oh, gosh, that's awful. That's childish. But you know what they're doing? They're teaching that guy, don't lay around. Don't lay around. Don't lay around. Uh, you you say well I'm uh, if you're sick I, I ain't talking about that if you can't you can't but if you could you should work you should work everybody should work everybody should work there that's the right way to build a church you know the right way to build a church the right way to build a church is live right preach straight and pray hard and work that's the right way to build a church the right way to build a church is not politics and get a bunch of rich people to build you this humongous glass auditorium that people will be attracted to and then set up uh, games and stuff to attract the soccer moms that have nice pretty little kids and daddy makes a lot of money. That's not the right way to build a church. The right way to build a church is not to turn it into a nightclub and make people feel like they're in a club when they come in and, and it's cool and it's kind of smoky atmosphere and, and everything. Does. That's not the right way to build a church is preaching, praying, hard work, staying after sinners, and getting it done like the Bible said. Pray and work. Pray and work. I like to see, you know, uh, one day I was coming down the road, and I seen this little church out there, and uh, I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even know what kind of church it was. I, well, I don't know if it was even a Baptist, but it was on a Saturday, and uh, I saw a bunch of these elderly women out there, and men, and one of them was mowing the grass, and uh, they down here, and they were pulling weeds around the, uh, that, like that. And some of them was planting flowers. And you know what? That I like that. That that was a blessing to me. It's just a blessing to go by church and see, man, them people care about their church. They're doing a little work for their church. You used to see that all the time. Now I tell you what, I heard about this man, and this man was an old country old country fellow that loved the Lord, and this man's heart was in keeping the grounds clean at the church. He, he, God gave him a burden for it, and he did it. He, he done all the weed eating. He kept the weeds off the bank. He he uh, he sprayed sprayed stuff around to kill the weeds. He he uh, he mowed the grass. He cut mulch and stuff around uh, the building and just done it. He said, "That's my ministry. God give me the ability to do that, and I love doing it." So when people come to our church, uh, it'll be clean and neat and everything. And they said the deacons got together, pretty fancy church, and they had a lot of money. And the deacons got together, and one of the deacons said, "I think we need to hire us a professional." grounds keeping committee and he probably knew somebody that had a landscaping business or something and he recommended them and sure enough they said that they hired that crew the church paid that crew uh uh to come over and and uh uh i, I ain't gonna do that i, I just ain't gonna do it but I, I ain't gonna do it but listen as long as i'm able i mow this grass myself before i'd hire somebody out there in the world uh, to come over here and do what a bunch of sorry low down lazy christians won't do amen Really, I remember that's ridiculous, people. But anyway, they hired this crew and they come in and uh, and they come in, pull around there and pull around there and pull around there like that. And they said in six months that place looked awful. They said it didn't look near as good as it did when that one old gentleman had his heart in doing that work for God. Listen, people, you know what we need? Heart. People need heart. Just like I was talking about sports, heart. And anything, your heart. I, you know, people. Listen, you can't, you can't, you can't duplicate that. You can't imitate that. You can't, you can't do without. You know, when a preacher preaches, he can have all kinds of knowledge, and he can have funny stories, and he can have charisma. But his heart, his heart's got to be in it. We got to have heart, brother, in everything we do. And brother, our heart should be in this work. And ladies and gentlemen, we need to get it done. Three things, right? Quick, and we're gonna go. Here's what you got to do. Have a mind to work. Number one, there must be a sacrifice of self. There must be a sacrifice of self. Amen. That's right, brother. Uh, can, uh, can you can you can you pick up something? I think about our bus workers. I think about our bus workers who work tirelessly year round, year round, driving buses, uh, going to visit bus kids, uh, 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 
52 weeks a year. One Sunday a year, we don't run them buses. And that's Youth Rally Sunday because it's out late Saturday night. And uh, we have just a regular uh, one service on Sunday morning. Other 51 Sundays a year, unless Christmas falls on Sunday, we run those buses. I thought about our, our bus workers. I thought about our bus captains. We have four captains, Kelly, Ethan, uh, Spencer, and Miss Sandy. And then we have all you workers that help them. And I thought about them. And you know what? Friday night, Friday night, all our friends from Rockingham, all our friends from up in Maryland, all our friends from Georgia and Tennessee and Alabama and everywhere will be there. And, and they'll wanna, they'll, you'll want to go out there and sit around them picnic tables and laugh and cut up and sit there. And, and I love it. I enjoy doing that. They don't do that. They're out there running, hey, get that one, get that one, get this one. Let's, let's get them home. They, they give all that up. They give all, They sacrifice self. They sacrifice their self. And they say, like our cooks, like our cooks, all you ladies that are cooking, uh, Lorreen, Karen, and 50 more of y'all ever who's helping, uh, all the ladies that cook, sometimes they're in there and they're putting a hot dog in a box, hot dog in a box to get those buses out and send them home. And they hear people down there shouting. And I bet they think, I wonder what happened. Somebody must have got saved. Somebody, uh, you know what they're doing? Sacrifice of self. Now, you can do what you want to, but I think everybody ought to sacrifice. If you just say, well, honey, I guess we're going to youth rally tonight, and just stroll in there at 5 to 7, sit down and soak up a blessing and leave, well, you, know, you can do that if you want to, but there ain't a whole lot of sacrifice in that kind of life. You say, what can I do? Straighten up chairs, give money, uh, help out, greet people. Do, uh, there, there are 10,000 things to do. If mine to work means there must be a sacrifice of self. You know what blows my mind? I guarantee you, Kevin agrees with this. I guarantee you, any preacher hear me know that. What blows my mind is that Jehovah's Witnesses can work like dogs every single week. I mean, you see them pull out and four or five of them will get out on a car. I'm talking about every Saturday and hit every door in the house and don't even believe there's a hell. What in the world wrong with them people? Listen, well, well, I guess if I ought to say, what's wrong with us? We do believe there's a hell and don't do nothing about it. Hey, man, hey, listen, the, you know all that, what I just said proves there's a devil. <laughs> Somebody asked me one time, they said, how did Job witness go out and witness? He said, Brother Daniel, I said, because the devil ain't trying to stop them. We believe right and he fights us. Mormons, them guys riding them little bicycles, bless their heart. I feel so sorry for them boys. I can't stand it. I had to get out there on them hot days and ride them little bikes all over creation and go out there and they don't even know where they're going when they die. They have no assurance. Most, I'm sure the big, big majority of them never really been saved. That's heartbreaking, y'all. But here we sit here tonight, born again, named in the book of life, uh, on our way to heaven, glory to God, go and walk on gold streets and live forever and ever and ever. We ought to be able to sacrifice a little bit of self. Number two, there's to be a sacrifice of substance. There's to be a sacrifice of substance. That would mean money. That would mean prayer. That would mean vehicles. That would mean uh, doing stuff like that, especially money. Uh, when I talk about money, uh, I think I remember what old brother Carl Lackey used to say. He said everything ought to pay for itself. I've never forgot that. A Christian school ought to pay for itself. Uh, um, a revival ought to pay for itself. And that's 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 a good rule to go by. And believe it or not, the Lord is sending in money to pay. This is our big week. We have insurance. We have the youth rally. Uh, we will spend easily, easily twenty thousand dollars this week. Easily, I, after all is said and done, probably. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, that. That ain't chicken feed, brother. Uh, but a person, you want to mind to work? We sacrifice of our substance. There are people watching online uh, that just write checks. There are people that are on that just write a check. And there are people that can. There, and a lot of you can't. You say, Lord, preacher, I live from week to week. Now I ain't got, then then you, 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 you don't, you're not including this. When I talk about sacrifice of substance, I'm talking about you that are loaded and and stingy that's what i'm talking about honestly uh and so uh we, we need to pray uh the lord will touch people's hearts the lord will touch people's hearts and put it uh in there to sacrifice uh substance then finally and i'm gonna be through is a sacrifice of service we sacrifice self we sacrifice substance and we sacrifice our service we don't have to be the boss we don't have to be the big shot we don't have to be in the limelight 
We don't have had a guy come here one time, long time ago, and, and uh, he was some little hot shop preacher, and he said, uh, I just thought I'd come in and see if uh, you need any help here at your church. I said, oh, Lord. We need, you better believe it. You, you, you are at the right place. We need all kinds of help. He said, what positions do you have available? Uh, and uh, immediately I figured him out. What he was wanting to do, what he was wanting to do is get paid and, and stand up here and make announcements and, and take over when I'm gone and, and, and sort of run, you know, like that and get paid for it. And I, I said, sorry about it. We don't really have a need for that position right now. Uh, we're, not, we're not in a position to have uh, that I said, now, now we got plenty of work you can do. Uh, we can clean this bank off out here. Uh, we can we can cut this cut this wood up here, saw it up, get rid. We we can we can uh, we got this all this stuff to do. And for some reason, he never did feel led to come back. I ain't seen that fella since. You know what? You know what we call him? We call that a moocher. Uh, to go around just a mooch off a church where he wouldn't have to work a job. Hey, Amen. Listen, hey, listen. I worked Clinchfield Mill. And a cotton mill. Uh, for year when I first got saved, I worked with a guy putting down carpet. Even when I was pastoring a church uh, to make ends meet, and uh, I, no preacher, no preacher is too good to work an eight-hour job or twelve, just like everybody else. Amen. Man, Lord, we ain't celebrities. I can't stand this generation of preachers who think that I'm not going there. That motel's not nice enough. I'm not going there. They don't give you a big enough offer. You are a bunch of babies that need to get your heart right with God. Listen, the apostle Paul didn't stay in a five-star motel. He didn't get him. He got put in jail. Brother, I'm telling you, there needs to be a sacrifice of service. Whatever happened to doing stuff just because it's for the Lord. Amen. That's right, brother. Amen. And he, with the weedy chairs, scrubbing chairs. Amen. Scrubbing toilets. I'm, listen, I'm, I don't put down a piece of trash on this church property. And you shouldn't either, and your kids should. I can look around where some of y'all sit on Sunday and see a pile of papers around where, and it's your kids that do it. And you shouldn't allow your kids to do that. They shouldn't let them be able to eat in here and throw p- uh, candy wrappers down on the, on the, This is God's house. If you go somewhere else and throw them down, I don't care. You say, Brother Danny, you believe in littering? Well, I believe it's a sin to throw down uh, French fries inside of a $20,000 car, yes. Uh, now, as I was talking about service, Y'all, that went right straight over most of y'all's head right there. Uh, listen, it ain't wrong to throw French fries out. You're, you're helping the, the, the ecosystem, the, uh, the environment by feeding birds. Birds like banana feelings too. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. I'm just kidding with you. But listen, y'all, that we are, this is God's house. And when we're at the fairground, just because it's a, uh, well, it's a fairground, so I'm, I'm going to wear shorts and bring me a Mountain Dew and sit there and eat popcorn. No, it's just as much church there as it is here. The, the building ain't the church. It's the people that meet here. That, when we go over there, brother, that place becomes sanctified. I never forget one time years ago, I went over there before, before the few days before the youth rally, and I was trying to get in there, and I went over on Saturday night, and I was trying to look and see if the horse chairs wasn't there. having a, a Mexican wedding reception or something. If I told you the other night, there's three or four hundred of them in there. Everybody was drunk. I mean, brother, when you walked in there, the alcohol hit you in the face. And I walked in there, and every one of them looked at me like, what are you doing in here? And I said, well, I'm, I'm kind of dark a little bit. Uh, but not that. <laughs> one of them just said, oh, you did Donald Trump. And every time one of them says that to, every time one of them says that to me, I did it at the flea market yesterday. This big old, big old black guy, he told me, he said, hey, Trump. And I said, yeah, I am, and we're going to make America straight again. And he loved it. He loved it. He said, yeah, I'm going to tell everybody that. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Uh, Lord, mercy, I'll get in trouble for saying all that right there. But, uh, I, I, you know, we're living in a generation. Can't even take a joke, y'all. Can't even take a joke, for heaven's sake. And, and uh, uh, Donald Trump, he, he, he does try to look better. He calls me up once in a while. And I say, you'll pay your tithes, you sorry thing, and, and, and give us a little help. But I'm, I'm just kidding. 
But uh, anyway, uh, we sacrifice our service. We got, we got the workers. We got the people. We got the knowledge. We just need to sacrifice. So to work, we need a sacrifice of self. We need a sacrifice of substance. And we need a sacrifice of service. Usually, Kathy can tell you, well, we've been having youth rally since 1987. Uh, usually, somebody gets mad at the youth rally and quits the church. We had fights break out. Literal fist fights. It's just demons working everywhere. Parent, husband, and wife cussing, screaming, and hollering. And it's because you got a bunch of unspiritual people trying to do a spiritual work. And you can't do that. We got to work hard. All right. That's all I got to say. We need a mind to work. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you this, this uh, evening, Lord, we do pray that you'd give us a mind to work. Help us as we go over there tonight, get all we can done, and then tomorrow evening, and then uh, throughout the week, God, you know all the stuff we've got to do, the practices, the choir, uh, the preparation, the decorations, everything. Oh, God, have mercy on us, we pray. Do what needs to be done in every life. And, Lord, I pray once again that you'd give us a great, great, mighty move of your spirit at the youth rally. Lord, it don't even matter who preaches or if anybody does. It don't matter if I get up on the platform, Lord, it don't matter. As long as your will's done and the Holy Ghost comes and does the work, we would much, much rather have that than for any man or any group, or any singer, or anything just to, just to put on some kind of show. God, we need help. God, we need conviction. Lord, there'll be drug addicts there Friday night. There'll be people that are about ready to split up their homes there Friday and Saturday night. There'll be young people that are doubting going to college this fall and probably turn into an atheist if you don't help them this weekend. God, I pray that you'd move. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. God, go with us, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. All right, cut the cameras off and we'll talk just a minute.